This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Gamers, do you like playing Mario? Yes, and why is that? Because of the cool levels. So today, we'll rank out the best levels in every single Mario game. That's it, let's get to it. It's a bit difficult to choose the best level in the very first Super Mario Bros game because all levels are a bit similar. I could be super predictable and choose World 1-1 because it's the very first Mario level of all time and it defines every level that would come afterward and blah 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 blah. But no, you know what? When I play Super Mario Bros, there is one level that I always love to play and it's 4-1. But why is that? After all, it's a stage featuring piranha plants and Lakitu throwing out stuff your way. But my fun comes from speedrunning the stage. You can actually just run from beginning to end and when you jump above the piranha plants, it looks super scary, but it's actually not that hard. I guess that's why it's my favorite one. Man, I don't know. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is a game I kind of dislike. It's literally just Super Mario Bros. but with super difficult levels. And I'm not the Kaizo guy. I don't like super difficult stages. These are called the lost levels for a reason. They should have remained lost. Anyways, you know what? I'm gonna pick 1-1 because it's the first and easiest stage in the game. So it's the one I actually appreciate the most. <sighs> this game sucks. This next pick is probably completely filled with nostalgia, but you know what? It's my list, so just deal with it. The first time I reach World 4-2, I love the fact that an ice level allowed you to jump on top of whales, slide on blocks, but the best part comes from there, where you literally pluck a freaking spaceship out of the floor. <laughs> like, bruh, this completely came out of the blue, and as a kid I never expected that to happen, and I love it. With only 12 levels to choose from, Super Mario Land was a difficult one, but I decided to pick a level that actually makes this game completely different from everything else Mario did before. And the level that does just that is the final one, 4-3. This level puts Mario inside of a plane and you get to shoot down baddies using your gun cannon. In a way, it kind of reminds me a bit of Cuphead. Anyways, this stage is also where you'll fight the final boss, and once defeated, you get to cheat on Princess Peach with Princess Daisy. Uh oh, Luigi wouldn't be happy. There's a crap ton of good levels in Super Mario Bros. 3, but I decided to go with my heart and picked World 4-6. Hear me out, the gimmick in World 4 is that enemies are giant which is actually quite cool, but 4-6 pushes the limits even further by allowing you to enter alternate dimensions using those doors. Technically, you can choose to play this level against big enemies or just normal small ones, depending on the doors you enter. Isn't that just awesome? Well, yes it is. Let's be honest, the coolest thing about Super Mario World is getting the cape feather and finally flying, which was what everybody wanted to do in this game after watching the commercials on TV. The first few levels don't allow you to do that just yet. You have to clear the first castle and reach Donut Plains 1 to finally see this little superhero Koopa and jumping on it will give you the most amazing power-up ever made. Just because of this, every time I think of Super Mario World, I think of this very level. So it's definitely the best one. Super Mario Land 2 features 6 different worlds to explore, and I have to admit that my favorite one has to be the Mario Zone. I mean, the world is just one big robotic statue of Mario, isn't that just great? The fourth level is my favorite one because it's all built with Lego bricks. Oh, wait a minute. I have been told that those are not Legos, but they are NNB blocks, which are toys that Nintendo actually created in 1968 to compete with Legos. Nice, that's pretty cool. But as we know, they kind of failed because no one know what NNB blocks are, but everybody knows about Legos. Eh. 
I had trouble actually deciding what level I wanted to put for the very first 3D Mario game, Super Mario 64. The obvious choice would be to pick Bobom Battlefield, because it's the first one and the one we all probably played the most. It has the flying island, the cannons, the race against Koopa the Quick, the fight against King Bobom, the scary chain chomp. But you know what? I think I'm going to actually pick the Hub World Peach's Castle. I know this isn't like a level in itself, it's just one big hub to actually get to the real levels, but it actually made Super Mario 64 stand out so much. No longer would you just pick stages on a map, no, you actually get to explore the entire castle, and it's filled to the brim with cool things and details too. An aquarium with a bunch of fishes, a creepy basement that leaks with water, this mirror, the infinite staircase, this long corridor that actually ends with the floor opening beneath your feet, man, even chilling outside of the castle is fun in itself. I do understand that being a game about Mario on vacation, most of the levels in Mario Sunshine would be beach and grass themed, but I do admit that I miss the other themes we usually get in Mario games. Having no snow levels and no desert levels was pretty disappointing. But thankfully, Serena Beach actually steered the pot a little bit. Sure, it starts off as being yet another beach theme level. But as soon as you get rid of this spooky Manta Ray, a big hotel will emerge from the goop and you actually get to explore it. This hotel is huge and getting lost inside is quite easy, but just super fun. And once you think you saw it all, the game actually gets you to explore the casino. For me, Serena Beach is like three levels for the price of one. A beach, a hotel and a casino. What more do you need? The first new Super Mario Bros game wasn't afraid of trying a bunch of cool stuff. And World 8-6 is a prime example of this. When you first start the stage, you might be a bit confused as to where to go. But you cannot be confused for too long, as hot steaming lava is rising from below, so you gotta move quick. Well, here's the cool mechanic about it. When you leave from one side of the screen, you come out from the other. So you have to use this to navigate through the cave and get to the top alive. Super Mario Galaxy had the big brain idea of combining its ice levels with the fire level. Freeze Flame Galaxy will force you to explore both sides of the planet at first to get familiar with both ice and flames. And then the third star will actually combine both, forcing you to actually ice skate on lava platforms and shoot fireballs at snow things to melt them. This is genius. What a neat way to introduce the fire and ice flowers in this game. Brilliant. So I had trouble picking up my favorite level in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, but I think that's just because I was looking for it in the first eight worlds, while it's actually in the secret world nine. 9-8 is fun, like I just love it. There's bouncy clouds all over the place, coins, fuzzies, king bills, and trying to beat it without touching a single coin was one of my favorite things to do ever. If you haven't tried the coinless challenge on this game just yet, well just play this level and you'll thank me later. My favorite level from New Super Mario Bros 2 also comes straight out of the secret star world. Stardash Castle is super fun because it features very scary looking platforming to do while having to dodge the Koopalings flashing attack in the background. If you're not hiding behind a wall, you'll turn into a statue and will most definitely fall down to your doom. So timing everything is the key to successfully getting through this level. And don't get me started on the part with the green snake blood platform. Oh my gosh, it is terrifying and killed me many times, but man, was it amazing. The best level in Super Mario Galaxy 2 absolutely has to be the Cosmic Cove Galaxy. This stage is by far the prettiest one you'll explore, and the relaxing music that plays just makes the experience even better. Swimming underwater is pretty fun, but freezing the planet to ice skate up a frozen waterfall is even more fun. And then, the 2D section that eventually brings you to space as you swim on floating water is the funnest. So yeah, as you can tell, this level is 100% fun. If you watched the countless challenge runs I did on New Super Mario Bros. U, then you'd know my favorite level is 5-1 Jungle of the Giants. 
This one features humongous enemies and blocks, and bouncing on them is just super satisfying. Plus, you can also speedrun it quite easily by timing your jumps and your spin jumps just right. Every time I play this game and get to this stage, I know I'm going to have lots of fun. I don't know why, it just happens. Super Mario 3D Land's levels are all pretty short and to the point. All except the final one, World A Dash Bowser. This one is actually super impressive, starting out on a lift platform, entering the mouth of a big Bowser statue where you'll have to dodge tons of very dangerous fireballs, only to then use this lava-powered elevator to reach yet another lift which will bring you in front of the final castle. You'll then have to use the cannon to shoot yourself up there, and then the real level begins. Yup, the Bowser fight in this game is more of a level than it is a fight. Climbing up the tower while dodging Bowser's many attacks is hella fun, and once you think you're done, well, Bowser makes a big comeback. This level keeps on giving more and more, and that's why it's the best one by far. So there's like a bajillion different levels in Super Mario 3D World, and while there's a ton of them that are just super original and fun, I feel like they all build up to the very last one, the one that will require all of your skill, the one that separates noobs from champions. Yep, the Champions Road is my pick for this game. It's just so difficult, it contains no checkpoints and it features all sorts of challenges. Not only is beating it difficult, but beating it with every single character is even harder. Dang, I spent so long on this stage trying to beat it as Toad and ugh. It is frustrating, but super fun. Super Mario Odyssey contains so many cool levels. Grass levels, desert levels, water levels, snow levels, and then there's New Donk City. I just had to put this one as my best level from the game because of how weird it is. Never before in a Mario game did you get to explore a big New York City-like level and get to interact with the people that live in it. You'll have to climb on top of skyscrapers, explore the sewers, bounce on pedestrians, and also on cars, and you even get to enjoy what the city has to offer. A movie theater, remote control cars, a jump rope, those are all activities that you can partake in. What a great level this was. I played Bowser's Fury so many times on this channel, avoiding literally anything you can avoid. Coins, blocks, colors, water anything, but one thing I never want to avoid is Crisp Climb Castle. This level is definitely my favorite one, I'm pretty sure the amazing music has quite a lot to do with that, but man oh man is it fun to actually climb to the highest point of the map and look at everything you explored so far and everything you'll get to explore soon. And speaking of exploring, have you explored the idea of building your own website? Because today's sponsor, Squarespace, might have something just for you. Building websites is hard and coding takes time. The thing is, Squarespace makes it easy and quick to do. I built this tiny website highlighting a couple fun facts about video games and all I had to do was to pick a template and to add all of my content from there. It was ridiculously easy. I can even add images, videos and create a newsletter to tell you guys about what's coming out soon on the channel. Using the extension Squarespace provides, I can easily connect all of my social media accounts and profiles to my website and I can even check out my analytics to see how my website is actually performing. Go to squarespace.com slash nicobbq and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Well, those were some actually great levels. Do you agree with my list? Do you disagree? Let me know by typing in the comment section down below. And as for me, well, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!